in the top right corner as the pink zerg it's Gortland. it's in the bottom left as the blue protoss it's ash panda actually not gonna do a best of you cannot do a best of two yeah about the tournament if you missed it a little bit earlier because the splash screen was up this is a round bromid best of two meaning there is a possibility of tie matches it's going to go off of firstly match score and then game wins if there's a three-way tie etc 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 the higher MMR player is the macro player. The lower MMR. From, oh god, I even said it wrong. Jeez. Alright, so lower MMR is going to be macroing. Higher MMR is going to be microing. So all that dank spine crawler rush micro is going into controlling this probe right now. Or Papa Panda. I'm sure he's very confused. Why he can't drop. A building on the creep. Okay, we love him anyway. Once again, thank you, the Platinum Heroes, for having me here today. They put a lot of work into these tournaments behind the scenes. Give them some love. Hit up the match arena for the tournament today. That's right. There are prizes being handed out. There are prizes handed out to the players. So far, this is actually looking pretty normal. Um, I'm sure we're going to see some wacky shenanigans eventually. This probe is definitely up to something. An adept coming out. To open for Ash Panda Twilight Council as well. Second gateway thrown down at the front for the Protoss. It looks like three lings poking out. Uh, maybe trying to sneak in the wall to get a scout. It's not going to quite work out. Portland going for a third base. Now, if we do see anything wacky, um, remember that an Archon is created by two High Templar or Dark Templar merging their essences in a very painful process that destroys them both. But then, like, you have an Archon, you can defend against Metalisk, so it's kind of worth it. And also, you can play in this tournament and win some of that dirty, dirty Matcherino money from GameStop and Planet Fitness. And, you know, doesn't that, like, really make it worth it to lose everything that you are? To gain the ability to do splash damage, but not storm anymore. It looks like the Protoss have a DD drop being set up, maybe. I mean, there's no, there's no robo. There's a, there's a proxy pylon. Is it going to be a slow warping of DTs out of Ash Panda? Did I miss a robo somewhere on that? I don't see one. Hmm. Portland. Already with a lair on the way. Overlord, not going to see the pylon. There's the robo, about halfway complete. Um, this DT drop, gonna hit a little bit late. You usually want the warp prism out on the field and near your opponent's base by the time the Dark Shrine is commit er, completed. And this is why, look at the Overlord coming in. It's even a little bit of a late scout, but going to see it immediately. It looks like Gore Tower wants to attack the Dark Shrine. I would too. That's pretty aggro as a Zerg to see a Dark Shrine on the field. The Overlord goes down, but he gained valuable information. Forge is dropped by Ash Panda. 
They are going for a couple DTs, morphing in. This one <laughs> picking off 11 drones so far. Ooh. Huge drone damage between these initial two DTs. More coming in. There is an Overseer. It's definitely seeing them, but I mean, they're not all going to get cleaned up. There needs to be more units on the field. Spore Crawlers are being dropped, but it's drones fighting a DT, and that means another four are going to die. Ash Panda is up 24 workers. In the first game of the tournament, another DT split off to the main going after the Spore Crawler. It doesn't look like it's going to survive. Uh, but an Overseer is coming in. Only three Zerglings to fight this, though. Bartlin on the back foot. Here comes another wave of Lings. They will get the surround. But 26 drones in total falling so far, and the damage hasn't ended yet. The DT going in on one of the Queens. There's Transfuse here. Every unit really counts. Transfuse is dropped. Lings find the pylon. Going to take it down, but Ash Panda in a very good <laughs> position. And we're going to see DT Blink! Chrono Boost dropped on the robotics facility, but a little bit of a supply block going to delay the warp prism, and that means no further aggression for some time from Ash Panda. Now, again, they still have a massive worker lead, uh, they have a pretty large bank. But this gives a chance, this gives a small opportunity for Gortland to get back in this first game of the tournament. <laughs> Lings scout the third, going down. They're not going to be able to get the shot off. They're actually going to swoop around to the side, try and get a run by into the natural. <sighs> T's are gonna see this. They could, they could, there's no wall. Oh. This still isn't a full wall off. They can get in there. Overseer comes. They're gonna try and surround the DTs, but Blink going to save their lives as they run to the defenses of the zealots of the centuries. Portland not starting anything. Okay, there we go. As I say it. 1-1 one, one on the way. Usually you want attack upgrades, but I think Cortland just wants anything they can to possibly get ahead. Ash Panda looking stronger and stronger. Six gateways thrown down, plus one on the way, and two Archons morphing in to the Platinum Heroes Archon Tournament. The worker count has evened up, and this is what I meant by the aggression laying off from Ash Panda. The Zerg can just drone, 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 and you got to make him pay for it. Now, Ash Panda still up 41 army supply, and that double Archon drop is moving out onto the map at the 830 mark. Portland has a chance. They have four base. Will they be able to defend this? 10 roaches in production. Ash Panda warping in additional DTs, warping in more Archons back home. Looks like they want to go after the third, actually, not going for the double Archon drop, which is perhaps wise at this stage of the game. Overseer sees the Roach Ball, gets picked off by the Queen. Aberrin, there was a DT in the Protoss wall. However, there was enough room for the links to get by. <clears throat> or in, on the back foot with a nice concave with some Ravagers, with some Corrosive Bile, but there's so much here from the Protoss. So many Archons. A couple Immortals in the back line going to clean up this army. 11 more Roaches and 10 Lings on the way, but the third is split off from the Natural, and that means reinforcements are going to be cut in half. The drones are pulled, but drones are terrible against Archons with all that splash damage. Every shot just launching overwhelming power onto the field. GG as Ash Panda takes game number one. in the bottom right as the pink zerg
it's Gornon. And in the top left, as the blue Protoss, it's Ash Panda. Ash Panda. Not bothering with the probe scout so far. Just gonna drop a gate back at home. Send the probe out. Reasonable time. No cannon rush here. Gornon drops a natural. Pretty solid Zerg opener here so far from Gornon. Ash Panda not doing so bad themselves. Going to drop the natural right on time as they hit that 400 mineral mark. Protoss completing its wall off. on with the completed pool ash panda isn't scouting to see if there's a third it means there's going to be a proxy of some level even if it's just a proxy pylon gornon <clears throat> is going to be on the back foot ash panda is going to be looking to get aggressive Born on with four lings to scout out. Maybe defend against an adapt if it comes its way, but third is dropped. Those four lings are going to be sent right across the Platinum Heroes logos towards their opponent. Robo facility in the main for Ash Panda. They're going for a full wall off to block the scout. Interested to see if they're going to cancel. Pylon. Oh, they're going to let it complete here. They did drop a proxy pylon with that probe. Getting an additional gateway. It's gonna be another DT onslaught. Going on, continuing to drone up. Sitting at 33 workers, going up to 35. Oof, Ash Panda with a pylon in the main. Gornon not messing around, getting the drone surround, Queen tagging on to it as well. Flings tagging on to the probe. Here come a couple additional sentries for the Protoss. Immortal is going to be the opener out of the Robo. Stalker tags on to the Overlord. Will eventually get shut down, but sees what the panda is up to. Did he catch these gases on the natural? It looks like no, he needs to move this Overlord. I mean, I guess he sees <laughs> the Stalker Century Immortal, so it's going to be okay, but... You always want to verify that and check as the Zerg player going up against the Protoss. Uh, or <clears throat> Gornon is going to be a little bit supply blocked from that Overlord pick as well. Ash Panda with the Hallucinated Phoenix Scout. 
Is this Overlord going to see the proxy pylon? This is very nice play out of Gornon. They are indeed going to see the pylon. Send some links out to shut it down. So no cheeky warpins from Ash Panda. Nice scout from the hallucinated Phoenix. Gornon. It's plus one on the way. I must say, a much more solid opener this game from Gornon. Twilight Council going down at the six minute mark for Ash Panda. Gornon running links around to the side, making sure there's no hidden bases, possibly going for an attack on the third if it existed. I would attack your third if you had one. But Ash Panda still looking like they're going for a two base push that Warp Prism nearing completion. Twilight Council almost finished. Plus one started up. Eh, no, actually they are gonna drop a third. I'm like they're going for a two base push as they start up plus one and drop a third. All right. Links try to push up the ramp. They're going to get deflected. This is a lot of firepower from the Protoss. Um, Gornon doesn't have enough to shut this down. Un I mean, unless they just don't pull their units. Oh my God. Oh my God. Are they gonna get the cancel? Oh, they back out. I would almost sack the links for that, then just follow up. Gornon is going for a Roach Ravager push. Okay, all right. So he might get the kill on this base. It's going to be dicey. There's a lot of sentry energy here. There's a lot of force field. The links go back on. This is very nice. Keeping that Nexus off shield, a little bit wounded. Panda moves out. This could be absolutely disastrous for Ash Panda. The Lings tag onto the third base. Roach Ravager ready to pounce. Ash Panda cancels the third, and they are going for a two base all in. Caster calls. All right, two Roaches go down to start the engagement. Ash Panda is looking for blood. They're pushing in. Bornon is coming in from behind, but Roach Speed not even close to finishing, and it looks like it might never finish as the Roach Warren gets picked off. Two Roaches, a bunch of Lings coming in. Queen's tagging onto a Zealot, not doing much damage. I mean, he can force seal this ramp for days. Nice Biles going to shut down these force seals, but they're going to be on cooldown for a while. Only two Ravagers for the Zerg. As the Protoss pushes into the natural, charge is about to complete. Plus one already has... Ash Panda only needs one force field and he has four sentries left to drop them. Is he going to though? He lets a lot of the roaches up, but it's a trap. They get cut off. The Ravagers desperately trying to corrosive bile this down. They do. There's still enough to clean up here for Gornon before all hope is lost. A lot of the Immortals going down. This is actually really expensive for the Protoss, but 30 drones falling in the engagement as well. Everything lost for the Protoss, but the Warp Prism going around to the sport location, getting the charge lots in. They will cancel the hatch, but Gornon already has another fourth up and operational. Couple charge lots being annoying, keeping the army at home. Gornon really needs to split the units to defend, and that's exactly what they're going to do. The warp prison has to cancel the warp in, but still has four charge lots, and they're going to head back into the main. Luckily, there is a second control group to intercept it. Gornon going for a counter attack as well toward the natural. I mean, there's too many sentries here for them to engage. They're looking to see if they can get a cancel on this third pace. I guess they didn't have the scouting information on that. No overlords on that side of the map to see. Well, actually there is. It's just not in range. But this is a lot of Sentry Immortal here. And Gornon needs to group their units up. They need to start massing up to engage this Protoss Death Ball. They have enough numbers to deal with this to deflect an attack it looks like they're going for a contain to make sure the protoss doesn't get a third but plus two almost finished for the protoss and those weapons are going to be devastating when they engage the zerg warp prism still harassing a little bit not getting any kills really keeping part of gordon's army back home
A bit of an engagement here. A sentry goes down. It's a lot of force field. A lot of energy gone. There's about six left on those sentries. And to try to throw down a third, maybe. Charge like can attack onto this army. Oh man, I would I would stutter step that before you lose a Ravager, but Charge Lot's going around to the new fort. The War Prism gets picked off. Ravager's firing from the high round. Recall attempted on the remaining zealots. Ash Panda pushes them to creep and decides not to engage. Gornon now with 109 army supply to 64. Corrosive Bile dropped on some of the sentries. Gornon coming in from multiple angles. The Protoss is trying to break through, trying to make it home. Recall is on cooldown thanks to saving those two zealots. There's still a lot of immortals on the field, and a lot of these roaches are low health, but Ash Panda in full retreat. Gornon chasing them down, getting shot after shot off onto these two low health immortals. A nice spread at the top of the ramp, gets a concave. Gornon can't really push in there, although there is a lot of corrosive bile to make the immortals reposition. They're going to go for the safer bet and try to cancel the Protoss third once again. Checks the Zelnaga tower, making sure there isn't a trap lying in wait. There's only about four force fields on these sentries. Ash Panda really needs to make them count. Gornon up in economy on four base to the Protoss to soon to be three. I think wants to take it chill, wants to go home, wants to max out Zerg at plus two weapons, plus one carapace, roach speed, finally halfway done again at the, at the 12 and a half minute mark. Oh no, the wings go toward the third, they could have made it into the natural, but it looks like they're gonna get two probe kills. Which is still, you know, Gornon can afford to kind of throw those away. It's almost worth the two probe kills given how far ahead they are. 70 drones to 50 probes. Gas on the fourth base needs to start happening though, and hive tech needs to start happening. These guys have been on lair tech for 13 minutes. 13 minutes of lair tech. The Protoss moving into double stargate. Going to get into carriers, maybe Tempest, to start taking the Zerg into the late game, but there's no late game in sight for Gornon. I mean, it's absolutely huge. I don't think there's even an infestation pit on the field. A Lurker Den starting up. There's the infestation pit now at the 13 and a half minute mark. I mean, Broodlords aren't going to be till like 15 minutes, maybe. But there's not a Spire started up. Protoss is going for another push. Gornon's pre creep spread pretty okay. They're going for another Ling run by into the probes. Ash Panda not reacting to this. This time they are going to get Lings into the main as well. This is going to be really annoying to deal with. Three probes go down at the third. The army's out of position to deal with this. The probes need to fight or they're all going to be slaughtered. Chrono Boost actually going to be dropped on the warp gates to get an additional warp in in. Ash Panda responds, but eight probes go down, and that means a 22 worker lead for the Zerg as they get a fifth base and as they max out. Three High Templars coming onto the field. I don't believe that there's Storm. Maybe there is. Hive Tech finally started up for the Zerg as this maxed out army engages. A huge bank behind this for Gornon as well. Corrosive Bile going down right in the middle of the Protoss Ball. Not a single one is dodged. They just face tanked it, and that's going to be very detrimental. Force Seals are dropped, cut off some of the Ravagers. But Gornon saying, I'm not stuck in here with you. You're stuck in here with me as every immortal goes down for... Ah, well, I guess... I guess the caster had to be wrong, right? So one immortal is surviving, a lot of charge lots as well, but that's definitely not enough to engage this Ravager Hydra in single roach. The third base is picked off. 
Ash Panda and a huge world of trouble. A lot of sentries here and might be able to cut off the retreat of this army, but will they be able to deal with the 2,000 minerals and 500 gas bank that's here now? Will they be able to deal with the additional production tunneling cause on the way? And the answer is maybe if these charge lots shred all these Hydra and all these Ravagers. I mean, I would just turn around and trade. My God, Ash Panda scared off by the creep a little bit, going to redrop the third, but these minerals in the main, soon to be mined out, 170 remaining on the final mineral patch in the main base. These ones not faring much better, 300 minerals on each patch. <laughs> Trying to reestablish their third base, but even if they do, it's going to be a one mining base Protoss against at least a three mining base Zerg. Soon to be for, there goes that hatch. charge lots get a split off on some of the hydras on some of the ravagers but lurkers putting in work from the low ground and it's just centuries of fighting this huge amount of zerg it's 72 army supply to 30 i mean gornon playing it really safe but it's their game to lose at this point down goes the warp prism even portal fighting against lurkers fighting against hydralisks lower and lower in health and this third base is all that remains for the protoss gg is called by papa panda ash still trying to put in work gg is called by by gornon uh, hey thank you so much for the follow dante i mean these guys going at it ash calls gg gornon evens up the series one to one So again, this is a little bit of a unique format. Um, that means the series ends in a tie as we go to our next one. We're going to check the bracket as we wait for the next game to get started. Oh my god. Oh, you should see the APM charts for that. I'm actually, I'm going to go back to the game for a second. We're just going to cut back. Gornon with 4,800 APM, 4,768, 4,768 actions per minute. I mean, each player is doing about 2,400 actions per minute. I guess it's just absolutely all rapid fire all the time. I don't know. Like, I don't even know how you spam that hard. Oh my god.